Hey guys, welcome to your Cruncher five minute exercise routine with the Sarge. Now remember, I own your butt for the next five minutes. So whether it's your first day or you've been doing this routine for months, it's time to get focused, get energized, and get yourself ready for a great workout. That's an order. First things first, let's make sure you have the Cruncher out and are set up properly. Right away, you'll notice that when you unpack the Cruncher, it comes lying flat in its folded position. Now on each side of the Cruncher, you'll find these red knobs which can be inserted into one of three holes surrounding it. Now these are the resistance levers for the left side and for the right side of the cruncher that need to be lifted up and placed into position, giving you light, medium, or heavy resistance, depending on your abilities. Now remember this, you always want to have the same resistance level set on both sides of the cruncher to give you a balanced workout. And you only want to change the resistance level in the cruncher when it's in its folded position. So let's do that now. Now, I'm putting the resistance up to the heavy because I'm the Sarge. You can put it up to whatever resistance level you feel comfortable. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is the right tension for you? Well, you'll know it's right if the exercises are challenging, but you're still able to keep your form intact. If you haven't worked out in a while, I'd start with the easiest setting. If you work out occasionally, or if you're already super fit, you might try going to medium or heavy. But if your form breaks, or if you can't go as deep into the movements as we do, then back off. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and either were your abs. Just give it time, and you'll get there. I promise. Okay, so now you have your resistance level set to the proper tension, so let's get the cruncher ready for your workout. That means lifting up the back knob, which is right next to the red resistance lever, and swing out the independent arm all the way around until you feel it click. Got it? Now let's do the other side. And that's it. It's that easy. This is why I love the Cruncher. It's so simple, it's built tough, and it delivers the same exact core workout as those $2,000 commercial ab machines at the gym. Who needs them? So now the fun really begins. In this workout, I'm gonna take you through five different core exercises. Each one is just a minute long, so it's very important that you focus on your form. It's not about how many reps you do. I'll repeat that. It is not about how many reps you do. It's about focusing on each muscle group and really feeling the contraction as you grow through each and every movement. That's how you get the max benefit. That's how you get a strong core. Okay, the first exercise is the basic crunch. Yes, a crunch with a K, because unlike normal crunches, this is way easier on your back. And of course, you get the benefit of two-way resistance, which is why we can get through these workouts so darn quickly. The cruncher should now be sitting on your lap in a comfortable position. Black pads sitting in the middle of your thighs and the chest pressed against the handlebar. Okay, let's put a minute on the clock and begin slowly pushing down with your chest until you get toward the bottom. This is isometric training. Now lift back up slowly. Again, moving slowly and concisely down. Good. Remember to breathe in at the start of the contraction and breathe out as you come back to the starting position. Now I know it's easy to forget to breathe, especially when you're holding in at the bottom, but breathing is a very important part of the exercise. It's a very important part of every exercise. It's what feeds oxygen to the active muscles and gives you the energy to finish your set strong. Never hold your breath. Now what are we working here? Well, we're definitely working the upper and the middle abs, but we're also working the lower abs, the hip flexors, and the lower back. Remember to keep the back straight and the core engaged the entire time. And let's do two more. And one last one. All right. Okay, first minute down and now on to your second exercise the alternating reverse crunch. Now just watch real quick. You're going to keep the cruncher in the same position. Make sure your back is as straight as possible. Core engaged, and this time you are going to bring one knee up towards your chest. Really feel it contract at the top, and bring it back down, and then the other. Ready to go? Okay, let's do it. Now for beginners, you're gonna to wanna to keep your toes down and in contact with the floor, just like the model. This gives you more stability and helps release some of the tension. As you get stronger, you can start to bring your feet up off the floor so they are hovering the entire time. Yeah, makes it tougher, but a great way to increase the tension and the effect of the exercise once you build up to it. 
Remember, you want to remain as stable as possible here. If you are struggling at a harder resistance level, just press pause and knock the tension down to an easier level. Make sure to keep consistent movement here. This is concentric muscle training, and it's oh so good for working those hard to train lower abs. And one more on each side. Well done. Now the crowd favorite, the V-Sit Crunch. Now this one really works the whole core, and you want to be on the ground for this one. Again, watch the model run through this once, and then we'll get you going. Okay, so you're on the ground, and you're leaning back at a 45 degree angle. The cruncher should be comfortably resting on your chest and legs. Legs extended out straight. Now, we're going to slowly bring our knees and chest together at the same time, and slowly return to a start position. Easy enough, right? Okay, let's get you going. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that this is a little bit harder, and that's good. You're working your upper abs, but you're also working your lower abs as well as the hip flexors, all at the same time now. Do your best to maintain your balance and avoid swaying if you can. Now, you might feel a little bit shaky. It might even feel a little bit awkward at first if you're not used to core work, but that doesn't mean stop unless you start feeling pain. You always want to listen to your body, but you also want to push your body. Know the difference. Okay, good. Now again, remember to breathe as you begin to contract the stomach and release as you extend back to position one. If you have to take a break, put your legs down and take a deep breath in and then a deep breath out and jump right back into it. And let's do one more. Very good, now you're cooking, and just like that, you're over halfway done. On to the scissor kick. Now you can remain on the floor for this exercise. Legs outstretched, crunch your handle laying firm against your chest. Now you just alternate lifting each leg up and then back down. That easy? Or it seems easy now, right? Let's begin. Again, the point here is not to set the record for the most repetitions, but to have slow, steady movements focusing on proper form and consistent breathing. I'm gonna keep harping on that because it's important. You're going to feel tension in your abs, upper and lower here. But more than that, I'm sure you're noticing a lot of strain around your hips. And that is because this exercise actively targets the hip flexors. If you are not familiar with that muscle group, well, you will be tomorrow morning. The hip flexors are an integral core muscle and one that is often underdeveloped. Remember to keep your back straight, and if you need to take a break, just put the legs down for a few seconds and try to get right back into it. Don't worry, a few weeks of this and you should have no problems. 10 more seconds. Embrace the bird, people. And relax. And just like that, we're on to our last exercise of the day, the oblique crunch or some people might call it the love handle crunch. Now this exercise is most easily done from a seated position. So jump back up to your chair or your couch or your stool, whatever you've got, and flip the cruncher upside down. Now the handlebar should be laying flat against your thighs while the black foam pads are pressed against your chest. Legs should be firmly planted on the ground for this exercise. The final minute is on the clock, and let's get this done. And all you're going to do is take your shoulder and bring it slowly down towards your opposite knee and bring it back. Now you can either do this by alternating shoulders right to your left knee and left to your right knee for one minute or by doing your right shoulder to your left knee for 30 seconds and then your left shoulder to your right knee for 30 seconds. Got it? Good. Now Christian is going to start with his right shoulder to his left knee and do that for 30 seconds and then finish with his left shoulder to his right knee. Ten seconds left. Make them count. And five, four, 
three, two. Whew. All right, good job, guys. And congratulations on completing your core workout for the day. If that was really tough for you, no problemo. It's going to get a little bit easier every time you do it. And if you keep working it five minutes a day, four days a week, you're going to start noticing big changes, both in your ability to push harder for longer and, of course, in your waistline. Now, if that was easy for you, then it's time to increase the resistance level on the cruncher and really focus on your form. If you want to increase the length of each exercise, you can certainly do that. But always focus on form first. Don't forget to follow the diet plan outlined in the Crunch Away the Pounds Healthy Meal Guide. And also look at my Fitness Aid Brain Surgery Fitness Book. Now, core strength and muscle development are forged by the exercises we are doing today. But six-pack abs, they're made in the kitchen. You need both exercise and diet to get a real six-pack, and we deliver both. Until next time, drink lots of water, eat well, and I'll see you back here real soon. Dismissed!